Don't be afraid to put a little bit force. That's what you want to see in the schnitzel. Nice golden brown. You can do it. You don't have to. It's time for some butter. Today I will be making a Wiener Schnitzel, the iconic dish of Vienna. Whatever its origin, the Wiener Schnitzel was perfected in Vienna. Making a Wiener Schnitzel is really only a technique. You can make it with veal, pork, turkey, chicken, zucchini, eggplant or cheese. The key is to adjust the breading. For instance, when you're doing the cheese, double the breading. Here we have a nice piece pork top round. The top round usually comes with the flap up here, but we have to cut off. Also I brought a piece of veal. You see the difference in color? It's a little bit lighter, bigger and it's nice and clean. I prefer the pork, it's cheaper and tastier. The veal tend to be bland, a milk fat veal. Before we clean and cut the pork, we're gonna start with the oil. Start heating up the oil. What you wanna do is make sure you have enough oil in it. If it's not enough and you're just covering the bottom, it won't swim in it and you will have darker and not so evenly spots there. Now we're gonna cut the meat. First we're gonna clean it and there's one big flap on a pork top round. You wanna get this off. It separates by itself. You, can, you even can go in with your finger and pull it off. It will come off this way too. But it's a little bit easier with the knife. You also wanna cut off the little fatty parts. What the butcher forgot. See the back side. Be pretty good here. A little bit excess parts you want to take off. You always will see where that piece finishes and where not. It's very simple. Good. You want to cut it a little bit straight so it's easier to pound when we tenderize the meat. Voila! There it is. Nice piece. When you cut it, Aim it for about six to eight ounces. That's a nice cut. That gives it about two inch for the pork. This is about seven, eight ounces. We're gonna pound now. This is the fun part. To pound a piece of meat, I use a little plastic just to keep it nice and clean and you find those pounders everywhere in the store. This is a special order, it's a little bit heavier. Make a, a line here about and go halfway this way, halfway this way so you don't break the meat so much. Always do a rotating thing. Don't be afraid of a little bit of force. So, you don't want to pound it too much. There's always uh, that Goldilocks zone. Not too thick, not too thin. This is uh, pretty good here. Season it. Always season the meat. When I serve sometimes a steak, people always ask me, what did you season it with? I always say, I have my miracle seasoning, salt and pepper. That's all it takes sometimes. A zucchini, an eggplant, just salt and pepper. Nature already did its part. It's so good. Now we're gonna bread it. I usually also season the eggs a little bit because the breading, you also wanna have it seasoned. This here is a nice thickness. You don't wanna have it too thin. It's like 
eating only breadcrumbs, then that's what you don't want. We start with flour, make nice coating. Breading is a fun stuff. I always do it with the kids. They love dipping in the flour, egg, and breadcrumbs. When you do the breadcrumbs, you want to put on nice and tight. And put a little bit of pressure on. And you want to do it pretty fresh. You don't want to let it sit too long because uh, what, uh, what happens is the meat soaks up the breadcrumb and it gets a little bit soggy. Now we're going to check if the oil is hot enough. There are a few ways of uh, testing if the oil is hot enough. You don't have to put in your finger to see that. You can use a wooden spoon, put it in. If you see that bubbling effect, you know it's hot. There's another way to do it. Use a few breadcrumbs, what you have here, sprinkle them in, you see the same thing. So that's good. Now we have the schnitzel here. When you put the schnitzel in, be very careful. Don't put it in towards you. You might splash and have it all over you. Always, any time you put anything in, has to be away from you. Nicely, slow motion. Don't have to throw it in. Have a nice big pan. See how the schnitzel swims in the oil. If you just cover the bottom and saute it like a piece of meat, it won't work. Now what you want to do is, when it gets nicely brown on the side, you want to shake it a little bit. You want to do a little bit movements to get air underneath. And we call it a souffle effect, where the breadcrumbs separate from the meat. And we want to have those bubbles. Also when you use breadcrumbs, you don't need to buy any fancy things, just the plain, not flavored. I like to put a little bit of butter in there, since butter makes it all better. In this case, there's some water content in the butter. It will go underneath the schnitzel and will help souffleing it. I love that sound, that means it's now separating the crust from the meat. I want to get a little bit more before we take it out. But the schnitzel usually takes two to three minutes. It is perfectly fine. Perfect. So, put it on a piece of paper. You have a little bubbles there, nice, evenly golden. Don't make it for a larger group, for four, five, six people. I would not do it for more than that. You have a perfect schnitzel and uh, it should be eaten right away. Don't let it sit around, it just gets soggy. Now you have that really nice crust. Now let's plate this. You have a schnitzel. Some potatoes. I always love to use uneven numbers when I plate. Never four or six, three or five. Don't waste that liquid here. Pour it on. That liquid or that butter, do not waste it. Just pour it on. It's so good. We do need to balance that whole thing with acidity again. Lemon is always Good, we cut a veg, cut that white stuff out here, there it is, since we all eat with our eyes first, let's have a nice sprig of parsley there, voila, there it is.